Hello's and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. So today guys, I want to show you some fishless recipes. This is perfect for anybody that is new to veganism and you are having a hard time giving up fish or you're thinking about giving up fish or maybe you've given up fish a long time ago and you just want to try out some awesome recipes. So this is for you and this is basically in celebration of the release of the new documentary called Seaspiracy. I just want to plug it and let you guys know that you should go watch it. It's on Netflix. It is all about what we are doing to the oceans and how harmful the consumption of fish is and it's all about the fishing industry and just how much we need to basically stop eating fish basically so hopefully this video will help you if you are maybe maybe you've just seen it maybe you've just watched it and you're thinking oh my god maybe I need to give up fish well hopefully this video will give you some inspiration to try out some fishless recipes so yeah without further ado let's get started all right guys, so for the first recipe, I'm gonna show you guys one of my favorite things, which is roasted pepper nigiri. I like to call this poor man's nigiri. <laughs> That's what I called it in my first uh, ebook. So this recipe is actually in my Cheap Lazy Vegan Recipes ebook because I'm obsessed. And it's basically using roasted pepper on sushi. So it looks like this. And basically you are using, instead of fish, you're using roasted pepper. And I know what you're thinking. I know you're like, Rose, didn't you just make fun of Gordon Ramsay for using eggplant because it's not filling? Well, guess what guys? You don't have to just eat this. I recommend when you're eating this, I recommend eating with something like edamame beans or maybe a miso soup with tofu. So I do recommend adding in some kind of a side that has some uh, extra protein so that you feel more full and satisfied from your meal. But if you are missing that kind of fishy sort of sushi and you're missing that kind of texture, roasted pepper does such a great job and it just tastes great uh, regardless of whether or not you're trying to make it seem like fish. It is so good, you guys. I highly recommend trying it out. It's actually quite easy. It just takes a little bit of time in the oven. So I'll show you guys how to make it now. So first I just cut it up and then I just kind of take the seeds out. Um, you can do this at the end as well after you've roasted. But yeah, you just wanna cut it up. I just kind of cut it in half because you can cut it more later. So cut it in half and you want you also wanna be preheating your oven. I like to preheat it to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I feel like I change it every time I make this. It doesn't really matter, but yeah, 400 degrees to maybe 425 would be a good uh, amount. So yes. So we've got this ready. This is the ingredient that we need. This is so simple, guys. Okay, all you have to do is bake this now. You want to bake it. Take the pepper and then you just wanna put it on a baking sheet I don't think it matters like which way you actually roast it, but all you do is put this on a baking sheet and then just bake it for about um, quite a while. I would say at least 40 minutes to 50 minutes. I'll show you kind of like what you want to look for, but you almost want to have like a little bit of a burning, you know, thing going on, okay? But anyways, I'm gonna bake it. Um, I'm gonna start with 30 minutes, see how it looks, and then go from there. Let's throw this in the oven. I have the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. All right guys, so while the peppers are roasting, you also wanna make sure that you are cooking up some rice. That's what I'm doing right now. I have a rice cooker in the back doing the magic and you wanna make some sushi rice. So I like to use either short grain brown rice or just sushi rice. It's kind of like the same thing. Basically you wanna use short grain because short grain rice is gonna be sticky and it's gonna basically allow you to actually make sushi. If you use anything that's like not short grain, it's gonna break apart and you're not gonna have sushi, okay? So you wanna use sushi rice or short grain rice, brown rice or white rice, whatever you want. It's cooking right now, it's making some noises, it's very distracting. Anyways, so cook that up so it's prepared and ready to go for you to make your sushi. So I believe I roasted mine for almost an hour, so I would say about 50 minutes to an hour, maybe even a little bit longer. You basically want to roast it so that it's super easy to peel the outside layer, which I'll show you later. And while the peppers are roasting, you can prep your rice. So for one cup of cooked sushi rice or short grain rice, I like to mix in one tablespoon of rice vinegar, a generous pinch of salt, and a generous pinch of sugar. Set this aside to cool. And then once your peppers are cooled down, you can peel the outside layer. There's like a thin outside layer that you should be able to peel relatively easily. This might be a little bit annoying, uh, but also very satisfying when it peels very easily. After you peel them, I just cut it into long shapes like so, similar to how they cut fish for nigiri so that you have these kind of long pieces. 
Then using damp hands, I just shaped the rice into little oval shapes. Mine was a little bit more difficult because I was using brown rice, but it still worked. I recommend using white sushi rice because it's just easier, okay? Because it's gonna stick better. Anyways, remember, I'm not a sushi chef, so I'm just winging this, okay? So once you have the little rice balls, just place a piece of the roasted pepper on top, and I just added a little jalapeno piece on top of each one just to decorate. Here is the roasted pepper, nigiri. Beautiful, guys, beautiful. It is so fantastic. I am so excited. So, soy sauce, dip, and I top mine with a jalapeno because you need a little garnish sometimes, you know? Mm. You need to try this. <laughs> it's so good. Mm. All right guys, so for the second recipe, I'm gonna show you how to make a vegan ceviche. Now, I don't know where ceviche originates from. Um, I think it's quite popular in South Central America. Not sure. Um, I think it's popular in Peru. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, so normally ceviche is basically kind of like a fishy dish that has a lot of lime and it's like mixed in with some vegetables. Like it's very fresh tasting. So I made a vegan ceviche. I think I showed you guys how to make this on a previous video, but I'm showing you again. This is so delicious. Instead of using fish, we're using hearts of palm. And if you guys don't know hearts of palm, it usually comes in like a can or a jar and it's very, very good. It kind of has a fishy flavor in my opinion and it goes so well with this dish because it's very fresh tasting. And yeah, it's really easy to make. All you have to do is just chop some ingredients, put them together, and then that's pretty much it. So here you go. Here's how you make the hearts of palm vegan ceviche. First, I'm gonna take a can of hearts of palm and I'm gonna chop each piece up into smaller pieces. And the hearts of palm that I can find in Canada are really like not as good as some of the ones I had in Mexico and in Brazil. Ah, <sighs> those countries, it just tastes better, okay? But anyways, I digress. So you wanna add the pieces into a large mixing bowl along with some chopped tomato, some canned chickpeas that I've rinsed and drained, some diced red onion, chopped cilantro. I also have some chopped jalapeno. If you don't like spice, leave this out, okay? And then I also like to add some avocado as well. And then all you do is squeeze some fresh lime juice and also add some salt. And I also added a little bit of black pepper as well. And then you just simply mix this baby up and then it's pretty much ready to go and it's ready to eat. This is so, so delicious, so simple. You can eat this on its own or you can eat them with like tortilla chips and you can top them on crackers like so. And I don't know, just eat it however way you want. It's so good and it's so fresh. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Okay, I'm just gonna have to try it for you guys because I want to. I wanna taste it, okay? So you can put this on a cracker. You can eat this with like tortilla chips. I think that's how a lot of people eat this. You can eat it however way you want, okay? I'm gonna enjoy mine on this like cracker thingy, canapé. Mmm. It's so fresh, so delicious. All right guys, so for the next one, it's not something new. I'm gonna show you how to make a chickpea tuna salad. I know what you're thinking. Rose, you make this like every video. Okay, I get it. But I couldn't do a fish-free recipes video without showing you how to make chickpea tuna. Remember that there are some people that are new here. Okay, welcome, hi, how are you? Anyways, so yeah, chickpeas for some reason have a bit of a tuna-y feel, if you will. And I just love making chickpea salad and I swear it tastes like tuna, okay? Maybe I'm crazy. So there's a lot of ways that you can make this. I think this method definitely gives it a tuna salad sort of feel. So here's how you make it. We're gonna be using a food processor for this, not just because it's super easy, but I also feel like when the chickpeas are more finely mashed and everything is more finely chopped, it tastes a little more like tuna salad, but maybe I'm crazy. Anyways, first I'm just going to add some chunks of celery and red onion into a food processor and then you just process it for a few seconds until it gets to this finely chopped consistency, finely diced mixture and then you just want to add that into a large mixing bowl. 
Then using the same food processor, I'm going to add in our chickpeas. And once again, you want to make sure that they are drained and rinsed thoroughly. And then you just want to process again until you have kind of like a nice finely chopped, finely mashed mixture. And then you want to place this in the same mixing bowl. And this part is optional, but I have some kelp powder, which is going to give this a little bit more of that seafood flavor. So I'm just going to add a very small amount of that. It's about a quarter teaspoon because it's quite strong in taste. We're also going to add some black pepper, and I also like to add some Dijon mustard. I'm also going to add some vegan mayo as well. I like this one from Hellman's. And if you don't have vegan mayo, you could also use like avocado as your kind of vegan mayo. And sometimes I just don't add vegan mayo altogether and it's still delicious and it's still fine. Um, but yeah, if you have vegan mayo, add that. If not, that's okay. Um, you can also make your own vegan mayo. You can maybe even add some tahini. Anyways, feel free to do whatever you want. So yeah, just mix this well. Give it a little taste. See how it tastes. Maybe you want to add some salt. Maybe you want to add some other seasonings. Totally up to you. And then that's pretty much it. I just topped mine with some cilantro just for the aesthetics. And of course, I love cilantro. You can also top with some green onions. And it is so good. All right, guys. So you can, of course, have this in a wrap in a sandwich, uh, on a cracker, on a rice uh, cake. Yeah, let me give it a try. Mm. It tastes like tuna. It gives me the same vibe, okay? It's better than tuna salad because you are not hurting animals and it tastes great. It doesn't have the fishy stank. You see what I'm saying? So try this out, you guys. It is so good. It's so easy. And this is definitely going to be a staple in your vegan fish-free diet. All right, you guys. So this recipe, of course, once again, this is a classic vegan recipe. This is going to be the king oyster mushroom scallop recipe. This is very popular among the vegan community, guys, because king oyster mushrooms, for some reason, again, have a bit of a scallopy sort of taste and look. So it's perfect for this recipe. Now, another thing I want to mention is I would not just eat this on its own. Don't think that you can just replace scallops. Again, scallops are higher in protein, higher in calories, so you want to be replacing or adding something else so that you are feeling full. So if I was having this with, for example, spaghetti or pasta of any kind, I would definitely like to add in some sort of a protein, maybe some beans, maybe some tempeh, maybe some mock meat, just so I can replace those calories and I can feel full. But anyways, this is so good, you guys. This is one of my favorite things. And yeah, I just think it's really tasty and it's perfect. This is how you make it. This is so easy, guys. All you do is take some king oyster mushrooms. I find mine at the Asian grocery store. I don't know about you guys, but that's where I find mine. And you just want to cut off the head and the bottom part and just use that middle part. But don't throw away the head because we're going to use it in the next recipe. Then you want to cut off the middle part into maybe about one to one and a half inches. And keep in mind that these will shrink in size when you cook them. And this part is optional, but you can make little knife markings like I did for each piece just for the aesthetics. And then let's go to a pan, add some vegan butter or some oil and then you can just cook each piece until it is nice and golden on each side and honestly quite often i just season these with just a little bit of salt and that does the trick because it's just so delicious on its own but if you wanted to season it a little bit more here i'm just adding a little splash of lemon juice as well as some garlic powder and i also added some salt to season and that's pretty much it my friends Okay guys, well, you know what time it is. It is time to taste. It's time to taste. It's so good. Mm. It's seriously, like I love the texture. Um, even if you really don't add anything but salt, it's so tasty. Definitely try this out. All right guys, so for this next recipe is something I just randomly made up and I think it's tasty. So it is a sushi recipe. Sushi is one of those things that I was really afraid to give up. I was like, oh my God, I can't be vegan because I love sushi so much. And thankfully we can be creative and we can make vegan sushi taste really great. So this is going to be my version of creamy scallop sushi. I don't know if you guys have this where you live, but um, it's something that I remember when I used to eat fish. I used to love this thing called creamy scallop. So instead of using scallops, we're actually taking some of those king oyster mushrooms again. We're gonna chop them into smaller pieces and we're gonna also add some soft tofu, which gives it a nice kind of creamy, 
kind of consistency and we're gonna make it into sushi. It is so delicious. This is how you make it, guys. So we're gonna be using some more king oyster mushrooms, including some of the heads that I saved from the previous recipe. So you just wanna cut up the king oyster mushrooms into smaller pieces this time, like so. Then you wanna put some oil on a pan, heat that up, and then add the mushroom pieces. And I like to cook this for a couple of minutes, and then I add some lemon juice along with some salt. And while that's cooking up nicely, which shouldn't take too long, I take a block of soft tofu. I find that the texture of soft tofu works really well with this, so I'm just cutting that up very gently into pieces, which seems a little bit silly because it will break up a little bit, but I don't know. I feel like it makes a difference. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Anyways, just cut it up into small pieces, and then I'm just gonna add that into a bowl. And into the same bowl, I'm gonna add the cooked mushrooms in there as well. We're going to season this with some garlic powder, a small amount once again of kelp powder, some salt, and of course some vegan mayo. And of course you want to mix this well. I like to be a little bit gentle so that I don't break up the tofu too too much. I just don't want the tofu to be just a bunch of crumbles if you know what I mean. Anyways, doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to take a nori sheet and we are going to cut them into long pieces like so. And I also prepared more sushi rice the same way that I did the first recipe. And then I make some oval shapes like I did before with damp hands. And then I took the seaweed pieces and I wrapped it around the piece of rice. And then I sealed it with some water. Okay. And then I just simply spooned in some of that mixture, the mushroom and tofu mixture into the sushi. There's like a little pocket, you just kind of put it in there. And um, again, I'm not a sushi chef, but I was pretty proud of these, okay? This type of sushi is called gunkan maki apparently. And um, if you wanna try making it yourself, I will link a tutorial in the description box because that's what I followed. And uh, yeah, you can of course use this mixture for other types of sushi as well. Like you don't have to make these. I feel like these are a lot harder. You can put these into like cones or into rolls. And yeah, just have fun with this mixture. It's super delicious and you can do whatever you want. Okay, so we're gonna have to try this, okay? Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I'm actually very proud of myself that I made this. Okay, I am. I followed a tutorial, so maybe I'll link that tutorial down below because I don't know if I did it like super well, but you know what? It stayed together. So let's try this. Ooh. I'm so excited. Yay! Oh! Mm mm mm. So good. So good. All right, you guys, so that is it for my fish-free vegan recipes video. I really hope you guys found this helpful. I'm gonna link some more recipe videos down below that I think would be helpful for you guys. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And once again, don't forget to check out Seaspiracy, which is on Netflix right now. Highly recommend watching it. And of course, tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody, okay? It is very important. We are almost reaching the point of no return, my friends. Okay, we need to stop right now, otherwise, we might be screwed, okay? Anyways, <laughs> sorry for the fear mongering, but it's true. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the blog post, which has the written recipes. I'll link that down below. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!